Okay, so in this example, let's pretend that this rectangle out here is a piece of metal. And this shape inside is what we're trying to cut out uh, from the metal. So this might be happening in a factory and, and, and sheet after sheet is pumping through on the machines and we need to do this in an efficient way. So we hold this metal with these two white clamps and imagine we're holding it, let's say, in the air and there's a torch and it's coming in and it's cutting this out. So how do, we, how do we do it? How do we tell the machine to cut this shape out so that all of these pieces will actually be cut out and then the metal pieces will all drop on the ground? How do we do that? Well, let's say we start cutting it, right? Let's say we start at this point over here. Let's call it uh, point A. And we start cutting at point A. We, we go up along this edge. Let me fix that. Change the thickness there go up here. All right, we're cutting along. And first thing that happens is we keep cutting. And then this piece right here will, will be cut out, right? Because we cut the whole thing. And our first piece, piece one, will fall to the floor. And then let's say we tell the torch to go down here, to go this way. Come back this way, and we're going good. We're, we're forming an Eulerian circuit. We're going to get around without having to repeat an edge. Um, but here, notice that if we come up to this point, right, what happens? Well, if we cut right here, all of these metal pieces will fall to the floor in one big piece. And that's a problem because why? Well, look at these two little pieces right here and this third piece right there. Those should be separate from the piece below. We need all of these pieces to be included. So, so how do we do that? Well, really, the choice that becomes obvious is if you can't go this way, let's try going this way. If we come this way now, this piece will fall to the floor. And we've got a couple of pieces left. What do we do? Well, if we cut along this way and then go up, this piece falls to the floor. And then if we go along this way, right, come back down, over, this middle piece falls to the floor. And then if we come back up here, our fifth piece will fall to the floor. And really, if you look at what we just did about how do we do this, how do we tell a machine to cut pieces in this order so that we actually get all the pieces, what we're really using here is something I, I referred to before as the onion skin algorithm. And this is an algorithm, I, I can't think of the, the actual name for it right now. And I, I read, I like this, I just this phrase stuck with me for the onion skin algorithm. I read it in a great book by, by Derek Darachibi. Bar Let me write that down for you in case you want to see some great explanations of graph theory. And they referred to it as the onion skin algorithm because we're dealing with this, this problem in layers. First, really, if we kind of retrace our steps, let's see if I can do that. What we do is we, we go along the outer perimeter, right, until we come to this first intersection and, co and come back and close that loop. And then we keep going here, and what we could do is we could have gone back here, but we're going to go this way and come back into this inner layer and cut this piece out. Then take care of this layer and cut this piece out, and so forth. Cut the fourth piece out and the fifth, and we don't even need to form the circuit, right, because everything's been cut out. So this algorithm, this idea of taking apart layers, and you can go back and look at the videos on that for the details of it and the ideas behind it, helps us with this situation and this problem. And I think in the next video we'll look at a, a little bit tougher of an example to see just how nicely the onion skin algorithm helps us cut all these pieces out in this order so that every piece is actually cut. Alright, hope that helps.